Well, it's been a little while, but I'm back. And in that time, I've shot a feature film and I fell for the marketing hype of Ari and <laughs> bought their new camera, the Alexa 35, and also got one of these. So after doing the only research I need, I loaded up the shopping trolley with the Alexa 35 and this one is the production package. I got a few memory cards, a bunch of batteries, all these other extra attachments, and that came to a total of $100 million, basically a house deposit. So when I got the camera, I took it out of the box to see if it works and successfully it did. <laughs> Plugged everything in and these cook lenses here are not mine. I was using them on the feature, so I had them for a little while and maybe I'll talk about them a bit later. So this is pretty great engineering this top handle here. It holds all the weight of the camera and it's just held on by this one screw that you can tighten with your fingers. They've also added this little screen and dial on the operator side of the camera, which has made it a bit easier to change some of the basic settings like ISOs and NDs and little things like that. So I tried to find some bright and dark scenarios around the house to test out the dynamic range of the camera, which is crazy. It's like a camera for idiots. You could just get the exposure completely wrong and then later on put it where you want it. So in this example of me standing in front of this window, yeah, I'm just using the basic Log C4 to Rec 709 conversion LUT and if you turn it off and on you can see nothing's clipped out here and this is a sunny day with white clouds outside and then there's this black pot plant indoors and it's holding all the information and if I turn the LUT back on and add another node for exposure you can see how much you can just move it around there's just so much room. Another new thing I thought might be a bit of a gimmick that they added was these textures especially this grain one which is called nostalgic texture but it actually looks really good. I was surprised how well it sort of just blends in with the image. I mean, sure, you can add grain later on in post, but I don't know, there's something just about this when you look at it. It just feels like it's really a part of the image. It, it looks really good. So I'm looking forward to using that on a smaller project in the future. I didn't use it on this feature because, I don't know, it was a bit too new and I didn't want to risk, you know, baking this grain in that I might not like later on. Because, yeah, you have to bake the grain into the footage. You can't apply it later on, I don't think, anyway. And I guess the theory behind that is that they're giving the control back to the cinematographers and not to post-production people later down the pipeline to do what they want with the grain. If you pick it and you bake it into the image, you know, you're sort of stuck with it, I guess, which is a good idea. I did a little bit of testing with the higher ISOs, the ES, which is the enhanced sensitivity, which is kind of like an inbuilt noise reduction that the camera does. I went through a bunch of different ISOs in this dark scenario just with this simple light in front of me. But even from about 4800 ES onwards, it still seemed pretty noisy from a first viewing. So I don't know, that is what it is really. I didn't get around to that much testing with the camera. I just got it and then we took it on this film straight away. I just did a few little clips around the house, but in a way this feature was kind of like the testing ground of the camera, which was good. It worked out really well and everything so far is that I'm pretty happy with. We've put the camera in all different kinds of scenarios. We had it on a gimbal, and then we've had it on a tripod. We did some handheld. We had a lot of the time on the dolly. We shot in the nighttime, we shot in the daytime, we shot sunrises and sunsets. And we shot this movie in ProRes 4444 because we couldn't, we didn't really have the budget to shoot in Arri Raw. We didn't have the, the card space or the turnaround time for that kind of data workflow. One thing to note is that the, the battery gets chewed up so quick on this camera. Once you put on sort of the Teradex and the, the wireless follow focuses and all that extra on the camera, and then we had 155 watt batteries. And it was probably about 20 minutes that the camera would last with all that stuff on it. So we had to have this um, block battery with the camera the whole time, which is pretty standard anyway. But yeah, it really is a power hungry camera. Well, anyway, this is just a quick video to show my first initial thoughts on this camera that packs a lot into it. Okay, regular sooner uploads will be happening more now that I have some time. Okay, bye.